America 2018, and I'm talking to uh, Kirk from Mumbai. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, massive show. Um, <laughs> the biggest one. <laughs> biggest one, yeah. Yes. Um, just, could you just give me a little overview of what you're doing here and what sure. you're showing to people? Uh, Omite is in the business of power resistors, and we've been making uh, selling power resistors since 1925. Yes. Um, we have uh, three basic types that we sell, wire wound, uh, thick film, and through a recent acquisition, uh, ceramic composition, which we'll talk a little bit about today. Uh, we also sell heat sinks, which uh, are accessories to some of our resistors, which require a heat sink. And um, we sell globally. Uh, that's one of the reasons we're here. And we also have some partnerships uh, where we collaborate with other companies uh, to expand our product line. And many of our partners are here too, so it's uh, very productive for us to meet with our partners, our distributors, and of course, end customers interested in our products. Yeah, it's truly really global show, actually, isn't it? You know, it is, yeah. very much so. And uh, it's so big, uh, you can only pull it off once every two years. But yes. <laughs> we try and uh, make the most use of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what new products have you got that you sold to people here? Well, uh, it's uh, very timely. Uh, two weeks ago, we made an acquisition. Uh, there's a uh, business operation. Um, it used to be called in the old days Carborundum. Changed their names a few times over the years, but uh, they're manufacturers of uh, ceramic composition resistors, which a very unique technology. Been around a long time, uh, but have a very special purpose. And it is that they handle uh, impulse energy better than any construction of any resistor in the world, uh, owing to how they're made. Um, they are, unlike most resistors, uh, Film resistors, for example, are just a deposition of a resistor paste onto right, a ceramic yes, substrate. Yeah. And wire wound resistors are a wire wound on a ceramic core typically. But a ceramic composition resistor like this one, the entire body is a resistor. Right. Okay? Yes. Uh, because they have so much mass, they're able to handle very high impulse energy for their size. Mm -hmm. This particular one is capable of handling 150 joules of energy. Uh, an equivalent thick film resistor would have to be enormous to handle yeah. Yeah. that amount of energy. And a wire wand resistor, uh, depending on the value, would have to be still much larger and much more expensive. So for certain applications, uh, typically uh, in the medical industry, anything having to do with the heart, uh, defibrillators, for example, uh, will dump 360 joules of energy uh, across your chest if you need it. But if you don't need it, they have to throw that energy into something because the capacitors are all charged and ready to go. Uh, they want the resistor to be small because the AED is portable and they want to keep the size down. Uh, and this is the ideal technology for that purpose. Uh, there's other applications. Uh, anything that is outdoors that might be exposed to a lightning strike or nearby, the electromagnetic pulse from a lightning strike can devastate electronic components, of course. Uh, so you want to put some kind of protection in there that isn't too expensive, uh, that can handle high impulse energy and not be destroyed by it. And that's the magic of this particular type of construction. So we think of power resistors as having three legs, uh, wire wound for high current, uh, thick film for high voltage, and then ceramic composition for high energy. Yeah, yeah. So now, regardless of what application you might have as a customer, uh, we can tailor the right construction for your application to help you optimize both on cost and size and performance uh, the right type of resistor that will solve your problem. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you see a lot of people here that you've got good interest in this, I'm sure. But yes, uh, when a customer comes on the booth, they might be from any number of industries. Uh, and so we have a little inquiry, uh, try to tease out uh, which of our three products uh, they might be most interested in. And then we can steer them to that particular part of our booth and begin talking about uh, the next level, which is how do you want to mount it, how do you want to cool it, um, and so forth. Uh, uh, once the type of construction is established, uh, the next few questions just kind of answer themselves, yeah. right? And try to get them into the right product and then follow up later with our rep or our distributor uh, yeah. to get them samples or whatever they need. Mm -hmm. Do you find that it, it, it's all ramping up now with the, you know, the, the, everything is more complicated? It, you know, the IoT, um, you know, more applications in, like you say, outside, inside. Mm -hmm. Are you getting requests from people that are completely new that you haven't come across before? Yes, this is a constant change in the electronic components industry is uh, both a, uh, a challenge and an opportunity. Um, the companies we used to sell to, for example, 
no longer use our type of product. Right. One of our largest uh, consumers in the past, many years ago, was the elevator industry. They would use our resistors for braking. Uh, but the big guys like Otis Elevator, for example, the largest in the world, uh, got away from using resistors and now they store the energy and use it later because it's a waste. So they use what they call regenerative braking where they put the energy aside and then they use it later. Um, so no need for our resistors anymore and a great deal of business was lost over that. But at the same time, you have new applications emerging uh, like um, electric vehicles and the charging stations for those vehicles. Uh, as I mentioned before, the medical industry is constantly coming up with new devices. They now have wearable defibrillators. They have all kinds of diagnostic. Uh, DNA testing is backlogged because of all the people who need DNA tests that require centrifuges. And centrifuges are a power application. Uh, so I'd like to say that um, it's never going to stay the same. Uh, the customers you have today are likely to not be the customers you have a decade from now. Uh, it's a moving target, but it's an ever-expanding target. So having new things on the market for people to uh, be interested in uh, and being uh, creative and nimble and able to adapt to change as it happens. That's the big challenge for all the electronic component yeah, manufacturers. Yeah, having that foresight now as well, isn't it, to be able to look and see where trends are going. Yes, hopefully. A huge part, yes. <laughs> Crystal ball, probably, yeah. Yes. So when, it, when the business started back in the 20s, mm -hmm. was it the, like, things like elevators and those sort of things? Not really. Uh, elevators were almost mechanical back then. Uh, right. the, the dawn of the electronics industry in the 1920s was really the radio industry. Um, you know, we had just gotten utilities and Edison with Westinghouse and and so forth, uh, electrifying uh, cities, uh, but the electronic components industry really finds its, its roots in the radio industry in the 1920s. And back then, of course, transportation wasn't nearly what it is today, so in the big cities in the United States, in New York and Chicago, um, component manufacturers emerged to service the local yes, manufacturing yeah. of radios, yeah. and uh, that's where it all began. And it's evolved since then, obviously, but that was really what, what uh, was the inception of the components industry. Yeah, and now it's in global. You know, you, you, you've got to be all around the world, haven't you? You do. That. You do. And getting your product exposed globally is really the great challenge. Uh, we're very, very lucky that we have a network of global distributors who uh, present our product, sort of marketing by proxy. Um, one of the great benefits of today is the parametric search that the engineer will have on a website like a Mauser or a DigiKey or someone like that where they can answer questions about the capacitor or the resistor they're looking for uh, and then down drops uh, a list of parts with images, manufacturer, the pricing and so forth and it's in stock uh, that meets the criteria that he's looking for. What the salesman used to do one-on-one -on -one is now handled uh, remotely uh, so an engineer in some places remote in South Africa let's say can see our product can ask for our product and have our product within 24 to 48 right. hours. Yep. It's a miracle. But well, yeah, <laughs> but the, the speed development works out now, isn't it? You yeah. Know, they, need, they need a solution, like you say. And speed is of the essence yeah. because your competitor, of course, is uh, working on a project similar, and the first guy to market has a great, great deal of advantage, mm. right? So um, these engineers are under a lot of pressure, yeah. uh, and we're fortunate to have uh, partners like, uh, like the distributors I, I previously mentioned and TTI and others uh, who are global and can sell in local currency and deal with them on a local basis yeah. uh, to get their product needs satisfied. That's fantastic. Well, I hope the show is successful for you. Um, so far? Yeah, yes, so thank you. Yeah, yeah. What other shows do you do? Well, we are a power company, so we try to uh, uh, gear our uh, presence of shows to that type of market. There's a show in the United States, I think we mentioned earlier, uh, APEC, yeah. uh, Applied Power Electronics Conference. It's a much smaller than this, but very focused on power electronics. Yeah. And there's one in Nuremberg every year called PCIM, Power Control and Intelligent Motion, uh, which is uh, motion control, mo robotics, and those types of people. Uh, those are our customers. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, very high-level engineers attend. Um, everybody visiting your booth is a decision maker in terms right. of what kind of components they'll use. Those are the kinds of shows we, uh, we benefit from most. It's interesting that despite all of the changes in technology and how people can order and choose what's needed, mm -hmm. you can't beat meeting people face-to-face -face at these kind of shows, can you? No, it's harder and harder these days to get to design engineers on the old-fashioned way by calling on them. Yeah. Uh, they're busy. Uh, there's no receptionist typically like there used to be uh, to steer you to the right person. Uh, they like to deal at arm's length quite a bit. They're very busy people. Uh, when you see them here on the show, um, they're here voluntarily, obviously, 
uh, you have all your product on display, which you can't easily do when you visit a customer. And you can have very productive discussions, at one after the other after the other, and accomplish a great deal uh, from, a, uh, uh, from a selling standpoint. Uh, so we place a high value on these shows. Uh, obviously, we meet with our distributors and partners, as I mentioned before, but from a customer standpoint, um, it's worth its weight in gold to be here and meet all these people. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to stop you talking to them any longer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank it was you. nice talking to you. And you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah. Okay, have a nice day.